The mode of vocal cord vibration in normal and pathological conditions has been investigated in several studies. We believe that the vocal cord should be regarded as a layer structured vibrator in order to explain the features of the vibratory mode in various conditions. This conception is very important for diagnostic aspects and also for simulation studies of vocal cord vibration. This is a frontal section of the vocal cord. As it is the portion at and around the free edge which is moved most markedly during phonation, we will concentrate our attention on this area. The surface of the free edge is covered with thin stratified squamous epithelium, about 50 micrometers in thickness, which extends an average of 1.8 millimeters lateral to the edge and an average of 2.3 millimeters inferior to the edge. From a mechanical point of view, this may be regarded as a capsule whose purpose is to maintain the vocal cord's shape. Underneath the epithelium, there is the lamina propria of the mucosa, which can be divided into three layers according to the distribution of the fibrous components, that is, the elastic and collagenous fibers. The superficial layer is rather poor in the fibrous components and appears loose and pliant. This layer is known as Reinke's space. From a mechanical point of view, this layer may be regarded as somewhat like a mass of soft gelatin. The intermediate layer is primarily composed of elastic fibers, whereas the deep layer is dense with mostly collagenous fibers. The entire structure consisting of these two layers is known as the vocal ligament. From a mechanical point of view, the elastic fibers are like rubber bands, and the collagenous fibers are more like cotton thread. Underneath the mucosa lies the vocalis muscle, the main body of the vocal cord. The vocalis muscle is like a bundle of rather stiff rubber bands. Thus, quite clearly, the vocal cord consists of multiple layers of tissue, all having different mechanical properties. This shows the layered structure schematically. From a mechanical point of view, we can differentiate the layers into three sections. The cover, consisting of the epithelium and the superficial layer of the lamina propria. The transition, consisting of the intermediate and deep layers of the lamina propria. And the body, consisting of the vocalis muscle. The average thickness of the cover is 0.3 millimeters, and that of the transition is 0.8 millimeters. This shows the load strain curves of each section. The strain for the cover is much greater than that for the body. The strain for the transition is in between those for the cover and the body, but is closer to that of the cover. On the basis of the measurements described so far, and those on laryngograms, we determined the average vocal cord position during phonation, as shown in this figure. The three layers are simplified into two, the cover and the body. The thickness of the cover in this simplified model is assumed to be 0.8 millimeters. The ratio of the stiffness of the cover to that of the body can be assumed to be 1 to 3. Now let us observe the vocal cord vibrations in various conditions. The subject of the first film is a bass singer in a non-professional choir. Almost symmetrical vibrations are repeatedly regularly. You can clearly see wavy movements on the mucosa traveling from below to above. The glottis is closed completely. This shows the results of frame-by-frame -frame analysis over one period of the vibrations. Lateral excursion of three points, that is the upper lip, the lower lip, and the tip of the wave, is drawn as a function of time. On the basis of this figure and the nature of the layer-structured vibrator mentioned earlier, we made schemata of the frontal section of the vocal cord model at the times shown with the numbered thin vertical blue lines. This shows the behavior of the layered structure schematically.
Let's look at the actual vibrations again. Next is falsetto of a tenor singer. In falsetto, the vocalis muscle is almost relaxed. The entire structure of the vocal cord is stretched by the cricothyroid muscle, resulting in an increase in stiffness of the cover. The amplitude of lateral excursion is smaller than that in heavy voice, and little wave is seen on the mucosa. The glottis is not completely closed. The behavior of the layered structure is shown schematically. Let's look at the actual vibrations again. In recurrent laryngeal nerve paralysis, mass and stiffness of the body are decreased, and therefore the difference in stiffness between the cover and the body is decreased. The left paretic vocal cord is seen on the left side, unlike a normal face-to-face -face examination. It moves like a flag flapping in the wind, presenting a missing motion. Very small waves are seen on the paretic cord. The glottis remains open throughout. This shows the behavior of the layered structure schematically. Let's look at the actual vibrations again. In sulcus vocalis, the mass of the cover is decreased, whereas stiffness of the cover is increased at the sulcus, or the furrow. The sulcus on the right vocal cord is not visualized because the angle of the light during the filming was slightly inclined. The amplitude of lateral excursion of the vocal cords is small. No wave is seen at and below the sulcus. The glottis is not completely closed. In the schemata, the right vocal cord is drawn symmetrical to the left. The actual vibrations are shown again. Jack to Mame no ki. Mkashi aru tokoro ni Jack toyu tokono go wa imashita. Jack no uchi wa otou san ga naku bimbo de shita no de Jack. In polyp, the mass of the cover is increased. Stiffness seems decreased in this particular case because the polyp is edematous. Although there is a small polyp on the upper surface of the left vocal cord, it does not affect the vibration significantly. The polyp on the right moves slightly later than the vocal cord proper, showing a coupled vibration. The glottis anterior to the polyp is not completely closed. The small polyp on the left side is neglected in the schemata. Let's look at the actual vibrations again. Jack to Mame no ki. Mkashi aru tokoro ni Jack toyu otoko no ko ga imashita. Jack no uchi wa otou san ga naku bimbo deshi. In polypoid vocal cord or Reinke's edema, the mass of the cover is increased and the stiffness of the cover is decreased. 
The movements of both the vocal cords are asymmetrical. The bilateral polypoid swellings touch each other for a rather long time, affecting the movements of the opposite side significantly. Mucosal waves are clearly seen, especially on the right side. Deformation of the polypoid swellings, as well as the behavior of each layer, is shown schematically. The actual vibrations are shown again. In amyloid tumor, mass and stiffness of the cover are increased. The tumor always remains touching the contralateral vocal cord, interfering with its movement. The glottis, anterior and posterior to the tumor, is not completely closed. The behavior of the layered structure is shown schematically. Let's look at the actual vibrations again. In epithelial hyperplasia, mass and stiffness of the cover are increased. The vocal cords present small asymmetrical movements. No wave is seen on the hyperplastic epithelium. The movements of the lesions are like that of a boat rolling on the waves. The glottis is not completely closed. Now let us look at the schematical representations. Let's look at the actual vibrations again. In carcinoma, mass and stiffness of both the cover and the body are increased. The right vocal cord, which has a carcinomatous lesion, shows little movement. No wave is seen on the lesion, either. The movement of the unaffected cord is small and irregular. The glottis is not completely closed. The behavior is shown schematically. The actual vibrations are shown again.